Good afternoon. My name is Shelley Bird. I'm an older white woman wearing a red sweater. And I join you from unceded Algonquin Anishinaabe territory here in the city of Ottawa. I am the Canadian Union of Postal Workers National Child Care Coordinator. I am responsible for coordinating the CUPW Child Care Fund and to work with our community partners to undertake child care related research to develop child care services and other child related supports that help postal workers with their child care needs. I will be host acting as the moderator of our panel, Union Support for Working Parents of Children with Disabilities. Joining me on today's panel is Gail Holdner. Gail is the Special Needs Coordinator. We also have Donna Michael, who is a consultant and a special needs advisor with the Special Needs Project. And Jennifer Hutchison, who is a CUPW member and whose child takes part on our child, uh, special needs project. We're excited to be presenting today about the CUPW Child Care Fund and two of its largest projects, our special needs and moving on projects. We will start with a brief background about CUPW and how the CUPW Child Care Fund and these two projects came to be. Gail will then uh, explain how the projects work and Donna will go into some detail about the important role of the uh, special needs advisors. Jennifer will talk from her own experience about how the project supports her and her son and how it has also supported her in the workplace. Donna will then uh, follow up with a wrap up with a brief explanation about two important initiatives the Special Needs Project has undertaken to improve supports and to respond to identified needs of members. We will end our presentation with a short four minute video called In Our Own Words. This video was produced by CUPW or the Canadian Union of Postal Workers. Before we get into the thick of our presentation, I would like to provide a brief background on CUPW and the special needs and moving on, how the special needs and moving on projects came into being. CUPW is a democratic uni union founded in 1965. Its members elect all union representatives, set priorities for bargaining and have the final say on contract demands and settlements. We represent over 51,000 postal workers that work in every community across this country. We, in the early 1980s, women postal workers began to make childcare an issue for their union and they wanted their union to make it an issue for the employer Canada Post Corporation. Between 1984 and 1987, CUPW began to put childcare on the bargaining agenda and in 1987 won an arbitration award that resulted in a joint employer union survey of the childcare needs of all postal workers at Canada Post. It took almost a decade for CUPW to negotiate the National CUPW Child Care Fund, which was established in 1991. However, it was from the first survey in 1987 that CUPW became aware of the additional emotional, physical and financial challenges members face when working and raising children with disabilities. To better understand the findings from our first study, CUP CUPW sponsored a second study in 1996 called In Our Way to look at workforce barriers for parents of children with disabilities. It was the first research of its kind in Canada. The study recommended CUPW to set up a pilot program for CUPW parents of children with disabilities. In the summer of 1996, 
the union put in place our special needs summer pilot project. This project was designed in collaboration with Special Link, the National Center for Childcare Inclusion. The pilot drew the participation of 105 postal workers. In the fall of 1996, this pilot project quickly became a permanent year round project intended to help reduce the financial, emotional, and physical stresses faced by postal worker families who have children with special needs or disabilities. To build awareness and support among postal workers for members who have children with disabilities, CUPW produced a video called Juggling with Care. This video was accompanied by a discussion guide about the additional stresses and workplace issues that come from working and raising children with disabilities. The CUPW Child Care uh, took the video out and the discussion guide out to CUPW events, conferences, and educationals. Our Moving On project came into being in 2005 when CUPW began to hear from members on the special needs project about how their children just don't stop having a disability when they turn 19. It was from this that CUPW developed our Moving On project. The Moving On project is available to postal workers who have adult children with disabilities who rely on their parents for care and support. I'll turn this over now to our next panelist, uh, uh, Gail Holdner. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gail Holdner and I'm an older white woman recovering from the flu with gray hair wearing a dark top. I join you from the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people here in Unimaki, Cape Breton, the land of the fog. I'm the coordinator of the CUPW and UPCE PSAC special needs and moving on projects. I'm going to tell you about the projects and how they work. It's an important to acknowledge that this project is unique in that it, it's an employment related benefit funded by the employer, but managed by the union. There's nothing else like it in North America or Turtle Island. CUPW was able to convince the employer of the value of the projects by explaining the benefits that would result from helping employees deal with the physical, financial, and emotional stresses that can come with supporting a child with a disability. Additional support can help lower the employee's stress, which can improve their ability to do their job. Canada Post bought in. So how do the projects work? The projects are for postal workers who have young or adult children with a chronic special need or disability. We support casual employees as well as permanent employees. And I just want to make a note here that while we take great care to acknowledge that adult children are adults, uh, for the sake of ease while speaking, I'm going to use the word child to mean both adult and young children. The projects help meet the needs related to the child's diagnosis that are over and above what a typical child or adult child would need. Besides funding and advisory support, project members are also supported through a biannual newsletter, access to the website, specialneedsproject.ca, and the project office staff. The range of diagnoses that we can support range from learning related challenges to severe physical, mental, or emotional disorders. Some of you may be wondering how we clarify what is a special need. And for children, a special need refers to a disability delay or health disorder that requires ongoing assistance and support and or extra or different help from that given to other children of the same age. We ask members to ensure that they're accessing all work, government, and education benefits that are available to them before requesting that the projects cover that cost. This means they need to use their health benefits to cover therapies and other support the child may require before claiming that cost with the project. We will help with the uninsured portion of these costs. This is individualized funding 
what might be an eligible expense for one child might not be for another child. Office staff can assist members to determine which expenses would be the best to list on their forms. There's two key elements of support for both projects, funding and advisor support. So everyone who joins the projects are assigned an advisor. And this is someone from the member's province who's knowledgeable about disability issues, aware of supports and services and the challenges that families face. They contact their members by phone at the beginning of each funding period to offer support and conduct an interview that we create. Donna will talk more about the advisors and the interviews in a few minutes. The special needs and moving on projects follow the same basic administrative process, but the eligibility criteria and what is considered an eligible expense are different. Essentially, we're running two different projects that support two unions in two languages that together have five different levels of support. Currently, the special needs project has 320 members and the moving on project 138. So here's a brief overview of each project. The special needs project supports children uh, from birth until the child turns 18. Qualifying families receive advisor support three times a year, as well as funding. And there's two levels of funding. For a child who is preschool age and in childcare at least 25 hours a week, that is related to their diagnosis, the member can receive two. We have adapted this to include those parents whose young child is receiving ABA or IBI therapy at a rate close to that of the child care requirement. All other members are eligible for $100 a month, except in the summer when everyone is eligible for $200 a month for each of July and August. This is intended to help members cover additional costs for child care when the child is not in school. For the Moving On project, uh, the children are eligible from the time they're 18 and older. And there's three levels of support here. So for full support, the adult child must be dependent on their parents for care over and above what a typical adult child would need. The member can receive advisory support twice a year as well as $100 a month. Advisor support only is for those members who would not qualify for funding. They can receive a call from the advisor twice a year if they wish, but less than half the members who are offered this choice take it. After the Moving On project started, we were getting feedback from advisors that made us aware that we needed a second level of funding. Some young adults were falling between the cracks. They did not qualify for full support, but because of learning related challenges, they struggled to get a job that would give them independence. We created the education-related support level of funding. For these young adults, we will help cover over and above typical costs, such as tutoring, equipment, or software needed to facilitate learning, and we'll help them get their first post-secondary diploma or degree. With both projects, it's a simple process to move members from one level of funding to another. If an adult child receiving education related support and is receiving education related support and their health deteriorates, they can quickly be, be moved to full support with us. Because this is an employment related benefit, the postal worker is the member. If they leave CUPW or UPCEP SAC bargaining unit, retire or otherwise leave Canada Post, they will no longer be eligible for the project. Potential members complete an intake interview with the project staff to determine their eligibility for the project. We're looking to see what their needs are related to the child's diagnosis and where the gaps are in support related to those needs. What costs directly related to the diagnosis and over and above what a typical parent would spend are these parents paying out of pocket? If the postal worker is eligible, we will send them the necessary forms. They have to provide verification of the child's diagnosis and complete our invoice and funding contract. The funding contract is pretty basic. We ask them to spend the money on costs directly related to their child's diagnosis. Let us use the information that we gather, speak to their advisor when they call and let us know if their situation with Canada Post changes. 
Once members have received funding, this is the standard process. At the beginning of each funding period, members are sent a package with the paperwork they need to complete. They receive an invoice for the upcoming period where they take a guess at where the funding will be spent and a statement of actual expenses where they tell us where they spent the last funding that we sent them. This is also when the advisor contacts them by phone to check in, offer support, and conduct an interview that we create. A check is issued once the necessary paperwork is received and expenses approved. The paperwork that the members complete, in addition to the interviews that the advisors conduct on our behalf, are a key part of the accountability. We have the opportunity to be responsive to members' needs. Having the advisors share the members' stories with us helps to respond to the members as people and not as numbers. We have adapted the policies and processes over the years to better serve the members both collectively and individually. We had a dad whose teenage son was on the autism spectrum and struggled to make friends. When brainstorming with him possible ways to use the funding, he mentioned that a neighbor, a man a few years older than his son, was willing to take his son skateboarding, but he didn't want dad to pay him. So dad's challenge was to purchase the skateboard. Normally, our policy is that we can help with the cost of an organized community recreation program, but we don't cover equipment unless it's specialized equipment adapted to the child's diagnosis. But in this case, we helped with the skateboard. We will adapt the paperwork if necessary. We've completed forms for members to show them how to do it, and we call people to remind them that the deadline is looming. Generally, we know that the projects help postal workers feel less stressed and more supported. We also know the lack of understanding by coworkers and management about the challenges that parents of a child with special needs or disability face can cause friction and turmoil in the workplace. Getting an accommodation to start your workday half an hour late so you can ensure that your child, who requires specialized transportation, get safely off to school can be seen as unfair by some co-workers or unnecessary by management. This would be one of the trends that the project flags and shares with the union. The union and the child care, co child care coordinator have helped to educate CUPW and UPCE members about these challenges that come with raising children with special needs or disabilities. Having a group of postal workers who are contacted on a regular basis and are aware that they will be asked to complete an interview with their advisor has provided a unique resource for the union. Sometimes the questions we ask in our interview come from the union itself. Our members are like the canary in the coal mines. If something is impacting the members on the projects, it's safe to say that it's impacting all union members. And I'd now like to turn this over to Donna Michael. Thanks, Gail. Good afternoon. My name is Donna Michael, and I'm a tall blonde woman wearing a green sweater. I live, work, and play on the unceded territories of the Lekwungen peoples and um, represented by the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations in Victoria, British Columbia. I'm an advisor with the Special Needs Project and have also worked as a consultant on very, various projects for the CUPW Child Care Fund. During this part of the presentation, I'll be talking about my experience as an advisor in the Special Needs Project. As an advisor, I contact members in my province three times each year for a telephone interview. These days, I contact seven members for interviews. These interviews happen at the end of summer or early fall, midterm, around February, and at the end of the school year. I contact members to find a time for the interview, and then I phone them back on the agreed upon time. Our interviews have three parts, a conversation with the member about how things are going for the child and family since our last interview, and how I might help the family with any concerns or issues, and how the family plans to use the funds from the project during the next months, and other information requests and questions about work, school, benefits that vary from interview to interview. During our interviews, we talk about what has been happening with the child during the past months. For example, during our recent end of summer call, I heard of the summer activities of families and their children, 
the startup of the school year, new and ongoing therapies and recreation, le leisure activities for the fall, trips to BC Children's Hospital and appointments with other professionals. Parents raise concerns about new teachers, education assistants, their need for respite, more regular physio, managing leave from work for hospital visits, how to get a child to use assistive reading technology at home, questions about the benefits of speech therapy, social group programs for children under 12, and challenges with employment support programs, just to name a few of these issues. We also talk about child and family achievements. I heard about a child playing on a regular community soccer team after several years of participating in an adaptive soccer program, children joining Girl Guides, Special Olympics, finding a new sport, and an older child in their first part-time job. Sometimes during those discussions, I just listen and acknowledge issues. Sometimes I may suggest options and resources, and sometimes I tell members that I'll do a little research and get back to them about additional supports and services they might consider. Then we discuss about how members are planning to use the funds provided by the project. Right now, I speak with members who have been part of the project for a while, so their use of the fund remains pretty consistent. Orthotics for a child with club foot, trips to BC Children's Hospital on the mainland, behavior interventionist, ABA therapist, swimming lessons with an occupational therapist, recreation related to a child's needs, special dietary supplements, and tutoring. Two of the members I spoke with recently were not requesting funding for the period. Finally, we go through the purposeful project questions that Gail mentioned that vary from interview to interview. The questions are developed in response to questions or issues members bring up, observations, and questions or initiatives from the union. The question topics are action focused, and depending on what members tell the project, their answers and comments have led to changes and new developments for both the union and the projects. Members always receive a copy of the interview questions beforehand, so they're always aware of the questions we will be asking. Through members' input and responses to the questions, the projects are able to be responsive to members' needs. And from the discussion with each member, us advisors record how the child's needs are impacting family life, resources to follow up with, and our advisor perspective on how the member and family are doing. I find that these interviews are a very special way to develop ongoing, meaningful, and supportive relationships with members. And now we'll hear from Jennifer Hutchison, a parent in the project, about her experiences. Thank you, Jennifer. Donna. Hello, my name is Jennifer Hutchison. I'm a white female wearing a gray and black turtleneck sweater with shoulder length hair. I come from beautiful Victoria, British Columbia on the unceded lands of the Coast Salish and Lagwankan peoples. I've been a part of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers for 17 years. When my son was in kindergarten, he was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. When I heard the doctor say, your son is definitely on the spectrum, I was in shock and scared of what the future may hold for him. I was a single parent at the time, living paycheck to paycheck. One day at work, I was talking to my coworker about the weekend we had. I signed Ethan up for group swim lessons a few weeks earlier, and this weekend he decided to get out of the pool and run around the pool deck. Finally, when the lifeguard caught up to him, his swim instructor came over and said that he would have to leave group lessons and that maybe one-on-one -on -one lessons would be better for him. I tried to get my money back, but they said no. My coworker asked me if I heard about the special needs project. I said no. Then she stated, it's through our union and she gets funding for her son through the, for the project, from the project. She then went over to the union board and got a pamphlet for me. I contacted the Special Needs and Moving On project and asked for more information. It was extremely simple to sign Ethan up and to send off a copy of Ethan's diagnosis. Once I began receiving funding, I was able to increase Ethan's speech therapy to weekly sessions. I was able to get a tutor that came to our house. 
and I was able to finally some, uh, sign him up for summer camp with a support worker there for him. I really did feel that some, like some of the stress was being lifted. Unfortunately, it wasn't. The stress just turned into a different stress from work. As a parent, there are many responsibilities that come with having a child, many appointments or sick days. At that time, I didn't have a support network for Ethan yet. I was still figuring everything out, at least a routine for us. I had many babysitters quit on the spot because they were just not trained. I was missing a lot of work and started to get 24 hour notices of interviews for my attendance. Management had absolutely no understanding or compassion towards me raising a child with a disability. I actually had a supervisor say, can't you just get your neighbor to watch him? The ignorance was appalling. I had a supervisor yelling at me one day because I had to sit down on the job while I was having a very bad insulin reaction. She was questioning me why I was sitting down. I told her why I was. Then she began yelling at me. It's your responsibility to take care of yourself and get back to work. She repeated it over and over. I was under so much stress. It takes time to create a support network. Now, having the funding through special needs and moving on project, I was slowly building Ethan's team, Ethan's teacher assistance from school, his tutor Duncan that has been coming to our house for the last eight years, co-workers, our advisor from the special needs project, giving us resource and resources and an ear for me to talk things through with. It was a huge struggle at the beginning with management trying to get time off work. Now, all I have to do is tell them that I need to be off on certain dates. This ease came from our union fighting for its members' rights and the Special Needs and Moving On project. I can honestly say, I don't know where Ethan, Ethan wouldn't be where he is today without it. Ethan, will be graduating grade 12 with honors this year. And he is enrolled for September 2023 post-secondary education at Camosun College Interurban Campus. They say it takes a community to raise a child. I like saying it takes a team to raise our children. Thank you very much. And I'll turn it back over to Donna Michaels. Um. While, this, while the Special Needs and Moving On projects continually hear from members, as we've talked about, um, and through member contact with the project office and through the advisor member interviews, CUPW initiated a total evaluation in 2016, a total program evaluation in 2016, to reflect and learn from the 20 years of the Special Needs and Moving On projects. CUPW partnered with the Canadian Centre on Disability Studies, now known as Aviance, to conduct the evaluation. Aviance is a not-for-profit, consumer-directed and university-affiliated national organization dedicated to disability issues and guided by the values of inclusion, equality, and participation. The overall uh, purpose of the, or the overall evaluation question that was posed was, are the projects making a difference in the lives of members who have children with special needs or disabilities? The evaluation team gathered information to learn about member outcomes in the areas of supports, advocacy, well-being, work, and the union, what works well and what can be improved in how the projects are implemented, and how well the project is meeting the needs of members. The evaluation team reviewed data from past members' interviews and developed a member questionnaire and stakeholder interview. During one of the advisor member interviews, members rated outcome statements in the areas of supports, advocacy, well being, work, the union, and their needs. 325 special needs project members and 115 moving on project members participated and 12 stakeholders were interviewed to evaluate the project implementation. Um, I, I'm gonna highlight some of the key findings in the words of members about how the project is contributing to their well-being at home and at work. We understand our daughter's rights better and can ask for what we need. 
my son is better able to advocate for himself with tutoring support and assisted him to grow as a person. My daughter is doing much better. Her health is better, fewer seizures. She has a better attention span and is enjoying life. My wife is now missing less time at work because of the improvement in our child's mental health and my stress level is going down. And in terms of work, we find it more easier to talk about our issues when we read stories in the newsletter. We knew we were not alone. It gave us confidence to talk about it with others. The project is why I got involved with the union and I have learned amazing advocacy skills. Although needs in all areas are ongoing, members in both projects experience less need in the areas of finances, respite, information support, and advocacy. In addition, the evaluation showed that there is much strength in how the projects are implemented. The evaluation ended by recommending acknowledgement and celebration of the achievements of the, uh, of the projects with some suggestions for further enhancements, concluding that both projects are making a difference in the lives of CUPW members who have children with special needs or disabilities. And now I'm going to talk a bit, I mean, actually introduce you to the most recent CUPW project for members who have children with special needs and disabilities, the National Disability Supports website. One of the issues that members frequently bring up to project staff and advisors is the difficulty they have finding information about the supports and services their children need. Imagine you're a single parent in a demanding physical job. You have two children. Your youngest child has a physical disability and requires care in the morning to get up, eat, toilet, and get dressed before the bus picks her up for school. After the children leave, you go off to work, and at the end of the day, you have both your children from their after-school care program. You come home, make dinner, and do the morning routine in reverse. While your kids watch some TV after dinner, you listen to your phone messages, read your mail, and your child's communication book from school and respond until it's time for your children to go to bed. Then you get out your computer and start to look for some resources and supports that the school has suggested for your child. You search numerous websites and are overwhelmed by the information that your searches bring up. You feel like you're drinking from a fire hose. You feel overwhelmed by information and that you are a failure for not being able to find and access the services your child needs. This is the experience as described by one of the CEW parents that led, led us to this project, disabilitysupports.ca, improving parent access to disability information through a national database of disability-specific resources, programs, and services. As you can see from this timeline, CUPW has spent several years working on the development of this soon to be launched website. Following an extensive investigative phase that looked at what lists and databases of disability supports currently exist across the country, CUPW learned that while there are several databases across the country that are specific to a particular disability, client group, or program resource area, there is no one national database of disability resources, programs, and services that's national, available in both French and English, supports a range of disabilities across the lifespan, is regularly maintained with telephone support, and is available to the public. However, CPW, through this investigative phase, did discover that there's a network of 211 community information services across the country that are standards-based with an open data philosophy, meaning that they can make data as open and available as possible to the community through the creation of partnerships. And so the journey began. CUPW entered into a partnership with 211 Services in Ontario, Nova Scotia, and BC to develop a CUPW portal website that would access 211 information about disability supports programs and services. A project working group formed with CUPW staff and 211 provincial leads and data staff, as well as community reference groups. Aviance partnered with CUPW to conduct a developmental evaluation of the project 
to guide us along the way with reflective practice. CUPW members in both projects and community parents are invited to provide input on this CUPW with two data. Donna, there's just some in, in there's just some interruption as you speak. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what should I do now? <laughs> yep, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yep. Yeah. CUPW members in the Special Needs and Moving On project and community parents were invited to provide input into the various phases of the project. CUPW worked with 211 data staff on the data structure that would meet the CUPW members' vision of how supports and services could be organized. 211 put forth technological solutions and CUPW hired an IT manager and developer to develop the interface of the portal, where possible members, community reference groups, and others became involved in developing the look and feel of the site. We are excited to launch the National Disability Supports website on December 3rd in recognition of International Day of Persons with Disabilities. And now Shelley will introduce the final part of our presentation. Just before we end our presentation, we thought hearing directly from CUPW members would be important. Um, CUPW produced a short four minute video called In Our Own Words, and it allowed members to speak to members about the benefits that come from being on the special needs and moving on project. So I could just get you to cue that video up. Um, I'd say one word. Hmm. Looking, it's only one. <laughs> Beneficial. Hope. Support. Freedom keeps coming to mind. I have three boys with special need, with the special need program. Behind me, I was. I have more courage to be able to speak to my supervisors. I was able to take time off whenever I have to go to take them for appointment. It has been a relief because one can never have too much help. When you have children with special needs, you take all the help you can get. Nicholas has been going to this camp now for six years. We both get a benefit out of that. He gets it because he has a great time, and I get the benefit where, because being a single mom, I get the me time back. It's, it's like we've done that little circle, and the happiness is there for both of us, so it's complete, it's, you know. It's just the fact of recognizing that we have a different life. Elizabeth is nearly 29, and I still have to provide daycare and, um, you know, support systems for her. All of that is supported by the Child Care Fund. They're happy to get funds, but also to speak with someone and, and explain their needs and what they experience daily with their child, their family, their community, at school, and with child care. She opens a lot of doors in terms of Guillaume's special needs, and the information she provides makes a huge difference. We've used it for his horseback riding lessons. He just loves it because it gives him 
the ability to go places that his wheelchair can't take him. It would be next to impossible for us to pay for if it wasn't for the fund. It gives me tools that allow me to better manage and understand Guillaume and to better help him with his condition. Thanks to the special needs project, Guillaume can hope to go further in life instead of being limited in so many ways. I think that this union has made huge differences in the life of all working people. And this is just another piece that's so important. And I'm so proud to be connected with a union who has such a social conscience. I want to say thank you very much for taking time on, on your uh, conference agenda to uh, hear from us about uh, how unions can better support parents who work and raise children with special needs or disabilities.